This is the new Toyota Prius, and it's a little bit like a pair of Crocs. You see, in the past, the Prius was not cool at all. What the hell is this? It's my car. It's a Prius. Whereas today, look at it. Very cool, just like Crocs. I mean, look at me. Oh yeah. In this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this car. I'm gonna talk you around the exterior, show you the interior, I'm gonna see how practical it is. I'm gonna tell you what's good about it, what's not good about it, take it for a drive, and of course, I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from zero to 60 miles an hour. Because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start this video by talking about the design of this new Prius because I don't know how they've done it. They've made it kind of look like a Lamborghini Huracan. Can you see it from like this angle and the, the glass area? It does, doesn't it? You also notice it down the side, though I should point this out. A lot of these cars will be driven by Uber drivers and you're gonna have customers come to the car and try and get in. You go, where's the door handle? And then you're gonna have to wind down your window and tell them that it's actually here. Looks cool, but not very practical if you're driving a taxi. Moving forward, you can see just how swept this windscreen is and the way the roof line just arches to the back. It's so racy. It's all in the interest of aerodynamics, including that little bit there. That bit actually really improves the airflow just around the door mirror, reduces drag, increases efficiency, and also reduces wind noise. But more on that in a bit. Here at the front, it looks very much like this. I like it with the daytime running lights, the main lights below, it just works. Well done, Toyota. You've made the Prius Cool. Now it starts from $27,000, though this one, with all the kit on it, it's $37,000. You might be wondering why I'm talking in dollars. You see, the reason is, this Prius isn't coming to the United Kingdom. What? The best Prius ever, and we're not getting it. Anyway, if you're looking for a hybrid, click on the pop-out banner up there, or follow the link in the description below to get a car wow to compare a range of offers on a whole load of cars. You can actually sell your current car through CarWow as well. Dead easy. All you have to do is upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. Pick the highest offer, and they'll come to your house, take the car away, put the money into your account. Now, if you'd like to do that at a later date, just simply Google Help Me Car Wow, and we will help you change your car. The new Prius is just as cool here on the inside. I really like the design of the dash. It's quite interesting what they've done with the steering wheel. They've pretty much copied Peugeot. Sort of works. It feels like you're in some kind of like spacecraft. There's enough adjustment in it as well so that you can make sure that you've got a position where you can see the dials which are beyond it. Sort of like a fake heads up display. Now there's plenty of adjustment in the driver's seat as well. Though there is a slight problem and it's not the beeping. This car does like to beep. It's a Toyota after all. Headroom here in the front. It is a little bit on the tight side. So if you're tall, even with a seat low, you may not fit in the Prius. That's one of the problems with this swooping roof line. In fact, if you look at just how swept back this windscreen is, once again, it feels a bit like a Lamborghini Huracan when you're sat in it, which is a bizarre thing to say. Now, other things that I like about this car, this big infotainment screen, it's pretty good. It's not the sharpest in terms of responses look, Little bit of lag there, but you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both of which are wireless, and they fill the screen as well, which they don't on all cars. I also like the fact that Toyota hasn't put the controls for the climate in the touchscreen. Instead, you've got a separate bank of switches here, like so you can control it all nice and easily while you're driving along. And this particular car's got everything fitted to it. You've got heated seats and ventilated cooled seats as well. It's hot today, so I think I'm going to cool my bottom a little bit. There we go. Speaking of which, I am sat on the fake leather seats, but you can get cloth as well if you prefer. In terms of storage, well, look, decent sized door bins down there. Big cup holders, though a little bit too big. Look, things are gonna rattle around. I do like this though. There's your wireless charging pad there with two little grippers, and it's wide enough to hold my big, stupid foldable phone which is, that's a good thing. I'm quite surprised actually. There's more storage under here and you've got USB-C charging ports there. You've got some more storage area here and a removable tray. So you can hide things under there. And then there's some more charging ports there. USB-C, USB-C, and then old school 12 volta. Although I don't know who's gonna use that. The glove box is of average size. So too is the material quality because some of the things you touch do feel a little bit cheap and the center console does wobble a bit. However, the materials higher up, such as here and on here and on here, feel a lot nicer. I do like this touch, big sun visors and big vanity mirrors. And then there's this extra extension here for the sun visor 
to block the sun if you have it at the side there like that and across there as well. Anyway, let's check out the back seats, see if it's as good in the rear. Here in the back, there's plenty of knee room. The issue is with headroom. Look at that, really is quite tight. People over six foot will struggle. It's especially bad if you need to carry three in the back at once because while there isn't too much of a hump in the floor, so there is enough space for everyone's feet, the person who gets this middle seat is really gonna struggle for headroom. I actually think it's a bit better for headroom in the back of Toyota's Corolla. Now, if you wanna see my full in-depth video review of a Toyota Corolla, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. There are also some other slightly weird things back here. You see, in some ways, they've really thought things through. For instance, the rear windows go all the way down. The Isofix angle points are really easy to get to. You have decent sized rear door bins. You can get it with heated seats here in the back and there's two USB-C chargers down there. Yet there are some things that are just a bit odd. You only get one pocket on the back of the front passenger seat, not on the back of the driver's seat. Also, there are no air vents at all here in the back. Huh? And while this particular car has two cup holders in the armrest, models low down the range don't and no models at all have through loading. It's a bit odd, isn't it? Let's check out the boot. The Prius's boot has this many litres of capacity. Now, while it does go back quite a way and it's quite wide, the issue is that it's not that deep. Still, that does mean there's not much of a lip to lift things over, which is handy if you're carrying heavy filming equipment. Oh, also, well, oh, I don't want to fall on my feet. Also, when you fold down the rear seats, they lie completely flat, which is handy when it comes to Oh, why am I doing this? <laughs> you get back in. And then sliding it towards the front. Now underneath here, there is some more storage. Look there, but it's quite hard to get to and it's divided up. That brings you on to five annoying things about the Toyota Prius. The Ray center console and the way the armrest protrudes slightly here means that sometimes when you're driving or you move your arm, you end up just banging your funny bone on it. And you're like, F off. sorry. When you have the air conditioning on and then turn the fan up to three or above, you get this weird water trickling sound. Have a listen to this. It sounds like there's someone behind the dash taking a piss. This car sounds like it's built out of the cheapest tin in the world. Listen to it. And the way the door shuts. <laughs> it's terrible. The sun blind is manual. That's not much of a problem, but this is. What is that noise? It's like someone's banging on a pan. I quite like the fact that Toyota have gone for a space saving, easy to store within the car low cover which then folds out. I just wish they'd measured it out properly so that when you put it in place and the boot is shut like that, it would fit and cover the load area because these are going to be able to look through the glass and see past it and see that you've actually got stuff in your boot and then they're going to break in and take all your things. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. I love the high definition surround view camera you get with this car and the fact it can do this thing where it will make the car seem transparent. So if I press this button here, you'll see, look, I can see the front wheels, where they're moving and what's underneath the car. How clever is that? Now, if I do this, all right, put it back into drive mode and let's say I'm looking at the back and it's all a bit dirty because there's stuff all over the lens. I press this button and it will wash the dirt off the camera lens. <laughs> it's cool. If you get the plug-in hybrid version, it's available with solar panels on the roof to put some extra charge back into your battery. Adaptive cruise control with lane keeping assist is standard right across the range. You can actually honk the car's horn remotely using the key to startle passers-by. <laughs> it's good for pranking. The rear view mirror actually has a built-in screen, so you flip a switch and then it will view from a live camera feed. You can see it looking at the sky right now, but if I close the boot, you will see me. The Toyota Prius uses a two litre naturally aspirated four cylinder petrol engine mated to an electric motor, which puts out 197 horsepower and it drives the front wheels via a CVT automatic gearbox. However, you can get an all wheel drive version, which has an extra motor on the rear axle, though that only boosts power 
by two horsepower, so 199 horsepower in total. Then there's the plug-in hybrid version. Once again, two liter, four cylinder, natural aspirated petrol engine, mated to an electric motor, driving the front wheels via a CVT automatic gearbox. Though that one has 223 horsepower and can do over 40 miles on electric power alone. You can't get the plug-in hybrid with the all wheel drive system though, for whatever reason. I think we better drive this thing. FYI, this is the front wheel drive normal hybrid, not the plug-in. Let's start off by testing the Prius in an urban environment. Slow speeds, cruising around, trying to maximize efficiency. And this is where the car is really designed to excel. When you're just pulling away and driving slowly, you're using that electric motor. Only when you prod the accelerator a little bit too much does the petrol motor kick in. And it's all quite smooth, all quite seamless. I tell you what's also smooth and seamless, the suspension. Deals really well with bumps. So this is a little bit bumpy here, but the suspension just soaks it up so very well. Really is a very comfortable car. Also the steering is nice and light and the brakes are really good. They're smooth, they're progressive. Sometimes with hybrids, because you have like regen braking, they can feel a little bit grabby. Not with this one, so I'm gonna brake a little bit and it's all very smooth and easy to control. So you have no excuse for making your passengers feel sick, eh? Note to Uber drivers, no excuse. What happens if you go the wrong way though? Well, here, once again, the Prius is really good. It's got a tight turning circle. I can't quite make it around this way. Oh, and I tell you what, those cameras really help. But it's 10.8 meters, which is impressive. Not quite as impressive as a Kia Nero. That's 10.6 meters and if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car just click on the pop-out banner up there but still it's pretty tight and it makes this car nice and maneuverable and easy to drive toyota have nailed the prius they've been working on it for a long time and this latest generation is just the pinnacle there is one slight problem though this pillar creates a massive blind spot and the view at the back window is tiny and there's a huge rear pillar as well the visibility isn't brilliant in that way it is definitely like a Lamborghini Huracan. Do you know what? I think I need to give this car another chance at a U-turn just to show you that he can do it. Watch this, in one go. Round we go. Come on, come on Prius. Yeah, easy, easy, easy. One thing that is interesting is that you do have this situation where the car's engine sometimes just cuts in and goes away, cuts in, goes away. You just get used to it and it's not particularly noisy unless you really put your foot down and try and accelerate hard. Now let's try the Prius out on some faster roads. So I'm now joining the freeway. I'm going to floor it to accelerate. Here we go. Blimey, did you hear that? That's the problem with this car's CVT gearbox. It does this thing when you accelerate hard, it holds the revs at a constant RPM for maximum power, and it just makes that mooing sound. Moo! Like a dying cow. That is the only issue with this car in terms of like the refinement levels because when you're cruising at speed, it's quiet. You don't get much road noise. It's so aerodynamic, there's hardly any wind noise. It's really comfy. Also, there's the economy. So Toyota says it should be able to do 68 miles to the gallon. This one's actually doing 47, though that's US miles to the gallon. If we convert that to UK Imperial, it'd be doing 56, which is all right. You know, if we're driving really cautiously the whole time, I think you get over 60. So it does deliver on its promise of economy. Once again, I'm going to overtake though, just to show you just how quick it picks up. It's pretty good, but to let you hear the mooing sound. Here we go. Bring on the cow. <laughs> I guess you get used to it after a while, but I just wish it didn't do that. It's the only thing. It's like you're revving it when it's stationary. Can you hear that? <laughs> oh, so odd. Finally, I'm gonna try this Prius on a twisty road. So I'm gonna knock it into sport setting, which will just ensure I get maximum power. I think it adds some weight to the steering, but let's find out. You sort of get lulled into a full sense of security with this car because that sloping windscreen makes it feel like you're into it really sporty. So too does the small steering wheel. And actually, the way this thing goes around corners is pretty impressive. Relatively composed, calm, remains quite flat, doesn't lean that much. It's actually very good. There is a slight problem though, two in fact. The first 
are the tyres. So obviously with this car, the tyres are set up for economy in mind. So they have reduced grip so you don't get so much like drag from them. That means that if you push too hard into a corner, you start to get the tires squealing and they'll eventually let go and the car will just push wide. The bigger issue though is the engine and gearbox combination. So you can't really control the car on the throttle at all. It's so unresponsive actually to throttle inputs this car because you've got that CVT which basically just dampens any effect of the acceleration from the engine hitting the wheels. It's just like you've got some big blooming elastic band connecting the engine to the wheels and as a result you just lose all response. And that is a real shame. I mean, people don't buy a Toyota Prius to go out for a blast down a country road. The rest of the car is actually so very good that you could do that if only the engine and gearbox combination wasn't such a blooming stick in the mud, spoiling all the fun. There, you can probably hear the tires then. And again. <laughs> But I just can't be bothered to push this car because of the blooming engine and gearbox. Bit of a shame, but then, you know, this car isn't set up for putting a smile on your face on a twisty road. It's set up for putting a smile on your face when you check your fuel bills. This Prius is supposed to do 0 to 60 in 7.2 seconds, but let's find out the reality now with my specialist timing gear. I'm going to launch it. Here we go. Come on! Come on! <laughs> 7.22. There you go. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Toyota Prius? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy the new Toyota Prius. It really is a brilliant hybrid car. Unfortunately, you can't buy it in the UK. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Oh, nice S2000 there. Actually, sod that. Let me know in the comments below if you'd rather have that S2000 or this Toyota Prius. <laughs> if you want to watch some other videos, click on those windows there. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow to sell your car the easy way.